So hi everyone, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for holding this late. I know you're tired. Um, I'll try to do my best and put all the energy I have. Um, so I hope you enjoy this 45 minutes of presentation. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, market behavior in the telecom industry. Uh, why I chose this uh, case study? Uh, this is an old case study, it's uh, from 2008 actually. So on the one side, the client doesn't care, so that, that's good, so I can present it. Uh, second thing is about multi-paradigm simulation, which is one of the core selling points of any logic, so I think it's, it's a good example to show the power of any logic. And the third case is that you'll find out later, but uh, I guess most of you are connected to this uh, because you are users of this uh, market. So let me start first by um, talking a little bit about the company I work for. So this is uh, Continente Siete. I am one of the founding partners. We are a team of uh, 20 uh, algorithm geeks. You know? I don't know if you um, do a lot of TED Talks, but uh, this was one of the recent TED Talks. Um, this is uh, a picture of the Aconcagua mountain in the, what, what would be the south part of the Rocky Mountains, so the Cordillera of the Andes. Um, but actually, it was modified so that the top of this mountain is actually the Dow Jones. Uh, this is a, a set of pictures done by uh, Michael Najar, and actually Kevin Slavin in a TED talk, he, he does uh, show um, some of these uh, pictures, so maybe you've already seen them. But basically, why I'm, why I'm putting this, our company uh, started um, as, many, as many simulation companies in the industry uh, with consulting. And now we shifted a little bit. We, do, we still do a lot of consulting, but it sh we shifted towards just uh, an algorithm factory. And the reason of this shift is that um, Latin America is a very hard um, market for this industry. This is, this is very new and cultural-wise, we are a bit behind. Plus, uh, Argentina is kind of cheap, so uh, anything that could lower upfront costs, we are into that, and we are actually trying to get really creative in how to sell simulation models and algorithms um, as a service, for example, to reduce upfront costs. To that, such an extent, we even started developing um, products like Flimbu. Um, you can look it up later. I'm not going to explain much of it. Basically, uh, it's in online marketing. Online marketing is a good uh, market for data analysis because there's a bunch of data. There's a lot of data there. And this is actually a Google AdWords optimizer, automated Google AdWords optimizer. It, you can check it out later. I'm going to talk about that. We, we even uh, go into releasing products that we even sell for, uh, I don't know, from $20 to, to $30 a month or something like that, depending on the size of, the, of who's selling it. So algorithms are scalable, and because they're scalable, they are cheap, right? They have cheap costs. Anyway, let's get into um, the market, and let me talk a little bit about the context. So this is Argentina, year is 2008. We have three big players. I move a lot, I don't like the pointer, sorry. I'm gonna put my shade here, hope my nose doesn't cover everything. Uh, so that's my client, basically. So there's three companies in, in this market. That's my company, that's a, a telecom company. We have two uh, telecom phone companies, phone businesses in Argentina. Uh, one has the north part of the country, the other one has the south part of the country. Funny thing about the, the phone companies is that um, for, for until the 90s, at least in Argentina, they were uh, the only competing agents. But here you have the cable companies which we had a, a completely, different, uh, completely different product, right? They came, uh, telecom companies came from the phone, cable companies had the TV. What happened in the uh, early 90s, more 2000 actually with a high speed internet, is they started competing, right? They had one thing in common before that, which is they both laid networks of cables. So they started competing in the, in the high speed internet. And um, why, so I think there was a, a good discussion and someone showed um, a diagram of why simulation, right? That's a, a big question whenever you face a problem. Why do simulation? Uh, one of the things they, they, they talked about and why this is a co very complex thing is that these two are extremely big players. This was a, a cable company, this was a phone company. They both offer uh, high-speed internet. One comes from the phone, the other comes from the TV. In came this player, a very small player, with a new offer, the triple play. You probably heard uh, about triple products in um, in, in other countries, they, they, they came before uh, than in Argentina. But this small company started selling phone 
high-speed internet and TV for a very modic price, for a very low price, what we call a bundle. So bundles became a very complex thing and there's big regulations in Argentina and um, there's anti-monopoly uh, rules that always can be evaded with uh, money so you, you can actually get, get through it. So they want to understand this bundle thing and I, as a phone company, do I, do I want to get into the television industry? What happens if the cable company gets into the phone business and gets in my turf? Do I have to respond back? How early? So those are all the questions that they wanted, they wanted to test. You can imagine in this market, we have the center of it, we have the customer, and please remember this configuration because we'll see it a lot. So this is the phone business, this is inter high speed internet, this is television, and this, we're not gonna touch much on it. This is mobile phone, but it's not just the regular mobile phone, it's the mobile phone seen as a, a product for a home, right? Uh, uh, typically phones are for people. Uh, this was a concept of uh, doing quadruple play, I think it also exists in other countries, of giving like uh, family packets and stuff like that, that, which they never tried in the end, so uh, we're not gonna do much of that. Uh, but in the center you have the consumer, and the consumer is the one that has the choice, right? The consumer receives a bunch of attacks or different products, and this consumer has to choose. And we are gonna use um, a, um, specific terminology so that we, we can relate. So the companies make offers, right? Like a phone and the, uh, and the TV bundle, a phone and the internet bundle. But a home can adopt a product, and a product is a combination of offers, right? Does that, does that make any sense? So uh, I'm in my house, for example, I have, I have phone from that company and I have TV and internet from this company. But I never told my client that I had the internet from this company. Uh, so uh, we have offers and we have products and each one of these four uh, is, a is a technology. Okay? And what we have outside this market are, um, uh, as I said, government regulations. We have macro macroeconomic variables. You can imagine that income and price indexes is a very, is a very big thing for um, consumer choice, for deciding the product. And there's also complementary markets. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a funny thing that we discovered in this project. Before, before, uh, the, before the, the birth of internet, first you had a computer, and then you decided to have internet. Now, you have a computer to have internet. So at this point, in 2008 at least, High-speed internet got into a barrier, which was actually a computer penetration. So we have complementary markets also going down there. Um, we're going to see a little bit of that. And let me talk about the objective, and again, the reason of why simulation. They want to de develop a tool for aiding their decisions, strategic decisions, and make a plan for the following years. Right? So I'm not going to put the, the small objectives here. You can imagine that strategic plan requires a lot of scenario generation, which is a very good thing for uh, simulation. Let's go a little bit to the scheme of, of the model, a very high level scheme. So, oh, I'll put it in Spanish in the end, sorry. Uh, so, empresa is company, by the way, and mercado is market. Those are the only two Spanish words. Now, you even learn Spanish now. So, you're welcome. Um, so, the company has the offers, as I said before, and also does the advertisement, the promotions, and they make the, the some, they have some restrictions, some specific restrictions, for example, the phone company doesn't offer just internet. They off only offer internet if you buy the phone, because it's the way to, to leverage the phone, the, the internet business, uh, and sell the phone, right? Um, you have the offers, uh, another object, those are the specific offers, and you have the market that's made by different homes, the users, right? The, the user, um, how do you call it, the leader, the leader of the home, the, the choice maker, or, or I don't know how you call it in English. And you can, you can imagine that there's a communication from this side to this side uh, with advertisement and launching actually uh, offers. Uh, there's communication from this side to this side, adopting the product and generating income. And there's communication between the different homes, right? So we're gonna work with all of that. And in the middle you have uh, social economic uh, variables, you have geographic variables and a lot of things. But there's a key thing, right? So at some point I will have to say, um, for, for example, you are a consumer and you have a bunch of products all around you, and I need to understand how you value these products to understand which one are you gonna choose. And this is the heart of this model. Uh, 
Z, this is the heart of this model, right? We had, um, it's not something we developed, it's actually you find in a lot of marketing books, it's a connected process for product adoption, right? There's four phases, the know, value, design, and implement, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about each one of them. So the know, the know is to understand that there's actually the, the offers out there. I may not know all the offers out there. There's, it, it seems very simple, but right in this model, there's like 120 different uh, offers. So it's, it's, it's quite a lot to, to, to grasp and to know each one of these offers. Um, so what, what mechanics do you use here for, for people to get to know these offers are basically what you find in a simple um, a system dynamics BAS model, which are advertisement and um, word of mouth, right? Um, we can get uh, more of that later. This is the heart. This is, uh, no, if this process is the heart, this is a coronary artery, right? is how do the, the, the users value the different products? Uh, any, anyone familiar with conjoint analysis? Please raise hands. Well, there's, there's a few, so I, I'll have to explain a little bit in a, in a two minute presentation of what a conjoint analysis is. Uh, let's say I want to market research this mouse and I want to sell this mouse, right? I want to understand how you guys value this mouse. Um, in market research, there's two phases. There's a qualitative phase and a quantitative phase. Qualitative phase is nothing to do with conjoint. It's about uh, focus groups and understanding how do you split this mouse into different uh, specific attributes. Like I know I, I, wanna, I want it to be able to work in every surface, like that's an attribute. Uh, I want to have a wheel, I want to have a lot of buttons. Maybe another one doesn't have a lot of buttons, but buttons, the amount of buttons is actually an attribute. Okay, that's qualitatively. Uh, there is the output of that are the attributes of the product. Now where uh, things split is in the quantitative side, conjoined from traditional uh, market research. Traditional market research will, will get you and say, how much points do you give for having a wheel mouse? And uh, how much points do you give for putting in, for having laser versus um, optical? And conjoint theory says, that's no use. Why it's no use? Because one doesn't explicitly separate the product into different parts, value them explicitly, and then add them up and say, that's the value, 100, 120. I get that one, right? Conjoint says, one does that, but it, it's all implicit, it's all inside. So how does Conjoin know how much you value these attributes? Uh, is, it's a very simple test. Uh, it's very interesting actually, and they put three different mouses in front of you and say choose one. And if they even have the price, because price is always a, an attribute, right? It's part of the product. They put three mouses with three different prices and they say pick one. They take those away and they put another one, uh, another set, pick one, and, and so on and so on. And they generate, they make them in some way uh, which they can generate these different values and the output are those curves over there which is, in this case, for the internet value. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close up to in a little bit. So this is the, the internet value for a single home, home number 248. Those are different, those are different levels of the technology. Uh, one megabyte, three megabytes, five megabytes of high-speed internet. And this is the value that the, the consumer get, gets for, that, for those kind of levels for each brand. Because you can also measure brand um, perception with, uh, with the, the conjoint analysis. Anyway, so this is the, the coronary artery. Um, here we're also gonna deal with uh, exit barriers. I don't know how it's in the rest of the world, and probably more or less the same, but in Argentina, it's kind of a hassle to get out of one of these companies. I don't know, I want someone has an experience about that and being a hassle. Yeah, you, you, you probably have. Um, it's what we call exit barriers, right? There's a whole, a lot of paperwork um, when you want to get out of these ones. Especially in Argentina, you have to uh, make a, a telegram. I, I don't know who, who makes a telegram anyway uh, nowadays, but uh, you have to make a telegram and cite document and whatever, whatever. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna deal with that. Then comes the decision. So now I have the consumer, he knows this amount of products, he knows which ones are best, but now comes the decision of actually choosing it. So it has to be available for that customer. Many times the customer calls to the company to get the product and the company says, no, we, we don't have a network there, sorry. Um, and then you have another two more points. You have money problems. I like it, I like it, I like it. I did, even for that price I like it. I like a Ferrari for the price I have, but I'm, I'm never gonna buy a Ferrari probably. Uh, I don't have the money. I, I like it, I, I think it's a suitable price for a Ferrari, but, but uh, you know, uh, I'm not gonna get it. And then there's an important part which are retention policies. And there's a lot of fun facts about that, but basically you call a company to get out, and the company says, whoa, whoa, wait, I offer you the same product but half the price for six months. Um, those are very common, and 
there's a self-fulfilling prophecy in these companies, in the mindset of these companies, that make them think that they are uh, actually really good. And we can talk about it later. later. Uh, I don't want to take more of your time. Uh, finally, implementation, right? Signing the contract and saying, for, for our model purposes, this is, I just adopted the new product. So how this works, let's do a, a, a paperwork simulation, right? So these are all the products that are available in the market, let's say. The blue one is the one I have right now, and I know all of these except these two. So these two, I'm never gonna be able to evaluate them in this, cognitive, in this stage of the cognitive process, right? in this iteration. Um, so now I come and, and here and I value the products. Still have my product, and I have these products that are okay, and I have these products that I don't like them, and I have these products that I like them, but uh, they, are, they are not for me. They are, I, I, cannot, I, cannot, I cannot get them um, because of the, uh, the exit barrier. They're not, the value difference is not high enough to overpass the exit barrier. And then comes the decision. I say, yep, yeah, I, I like these three, but I cannot have any of these two. So I still have one that's better than mine. Retention policy here may uh, swap the whole thing and say, I keep my, I keep my own product. So then they implement the product, and this process is being repeated um, stochastically um, with, with, a, with a determined frequency each time. And the process, in this case, is done instantaneously. So the model. Let's talk about some uh, screenshots. I'm going to go briefly through it. Uh, when uh, Timothy stands up, I accelerate even more. Um, I know I talk fast. English is not my primary language. so. You can ask more questions if you didn't understand anything. So basically, this is the main view. We have the four different, uh, 400 different homes. I didn't say that, but actually the conjoint analysis was made for 400 homes, um, representative of the different socioeconomic levels and different geographic uh, zones in uh, that part of Argentina, right? And we actually use those houses just as the same as they explained uh, for, for the previous marketing model that they used an agent for 100, 100 people. We actually use an agent for 1,000 people. Right, so it's, it's a little bit less um, um, robust. Uh, still valid, um, we can talk about the validity later. Uh, so 400, 400 uh, homes, for each one of these homes, I know their utility curves, I know their value curves for each one of the products, right? And what we're gonna see here are the different status of these homes. Um, we're gonna see the, the, the small triangular roof with uh, excellent graphic design that we, we have you know, in, in our company. It's, it's just a triangle. And if it's wide, nothing's happening. If it's red, that, that home wants a product but cannot afford it. If it's green, it's in a promotion status. So it, they just adopted a, a product and they received a promotion. If it's yellow, they just were they wanted to go out and they were just conv convinced that the, with um, a reduced price, they stayed. And you got the four, four blocks for different technologies. Color is the company and the intensity of the color is the level of the technology, right? In case of internet, one mega, three mega. Yeah. There's two. There's a uh, socioeconomic level on the uh, up, high socio, uh, socioeconomic level, medium, low. And you have different zones. You have high competition zones and low competition zones. Um, you can ask more about that later. Um, we have the home. This is inside the home. Up there, we have the valley curves. Uh, here, we have the status. Whether it has a PC or not, it doesn't have a PC. This is dynamic. And the, uh, the economic level. And this is how um, the consumer is working in the inside whether they like other offers or not, and whether they can afford it or not over time. Uh, this is just, I'm gonna show more about this, but this is all the products of company one, for example, and you can get in there and change the prices and launch them and do different scenarios with that. And this is the PC model, and this is the system dynamics model. Why system dynamics? It's, a, it's a, an adapted bus model with a price into it. Um, we validated that separately. We consider it independently from the rest of the system. You can argue that, that that's not actually true. Um, so we made the computer, the computer, um, I mean, the computer market influence the rest of the system, but we didn't, we didn't make the system influence the computer market. Um, uh, and that's why we, we could use uh, system dynamics for it. Um, this case. And this is the, the core of our, of our model. This is a kind of custom graphs that uh, people could make. Uh, you can see it's a stochastic process. So there's, for each curve, this is market share for high-speed internet, for example, in each one of the companies. There's a stochasticity in here, so uh, we actually run a lot of curves. Those are the, the con confidence intervals. Uh, small video that I'm gonna have to accelerate because I don't know how I'm going with time, but 
Uh, we have warm-up periods. You can ask more about why we have warm-up periods. Uh, in here, we're doing an experiment that has make, makes no sense, which is basically launching triple play products from the first company, from company one, in the beginning of the simulation. This is for run two. So when I show the graphs later on, so this, this is one home, what's happening inside the home. We can go back to this if you have any questions. I want to show the different charts. You can, you can create a chart. Uh, it doesn't matter, you can create a chart. You know how to create a chart. Uh, ah, here. Stop, stop. Yeah, so um, I took advantage of this. Run one is the, is the one that, that are darker in each, in each one. Run two is the, is the one that uh, has uh, this new configuration where the company one launches triple play in the beginning of the simulation, which is both um, business impossible and actually it doesn't make any sense because I'm doing a stochastic, uh, stochastic analysis and I have to choose a scenario before actually so before and run, uh, do a couple of runs, and I'm, I'm actually using two runs to compare it. But anyway, you see market share of uh, company one going up and the rest going down. Um, and this is basically the, the model. Okay. Output. So this is the interesting part, right? These are the, this is the scenario analysis. This is what happens. I'm uh, standing up. Yeah, I standing up. <laughs> what happens if I, this is company one, this is, um, homes of these 400 that have internet for company one, what happens if I launch TV at the same time as the big competitor launches a uh, phone? What happens if I launch it um, six months later, 12 months later, or what happens if I don't launch my triple play, right? Those are the types of scenarios that, that we chose. Uh, we did a, a computer uh, subsidy doing the same model as the cell phone, like the um, operator subsidizing the cell phone. What if uh, the operator subsidized the computer? Um, and we did, we used this to build different scenarios and we got the best scenario from those tests. It's, again, it's not optimization, uh, where we actually launched quadruple play, but of course that was impossible. Uh, conclusions, we, we did build this simulation model, uh, we generated the scenarios, and actually this tool was um, Validated beforehand and used for the plan for the plan area of uh, 2009. Uh, thank you very much. Oh yeah, I had to give him the the microphone. Oh. Questions? <laughs> Hi. Uh, Hi. Pretty impressive. Interesting. Uh, two thank questions. You. Yeah. Did you take into account actual segmentation of the consumers? Segmentation in terms of? We d we Just did segmentation. The operators uh, like to talk about segmentations and they imagine what, what the behavior of the, their consumers would be in the different segments. So is that reflected in the, uh, in the model? So uh, I'm going to answer the first part of, uh, part of your question with yes and no. Um, so we have big segments, which are groups, which is uh, geographically and by socioeconomic level but think that segments are just an excuse to interpret uh, these um, value curves. So much of the segments, that, uh, a lot of the segments that they build are upon how they value the different products. But now you have micro segmentation. So basically you have a segmentation a one by one, but what you don't have, and, and, and there I agree with you, you don't have segmentation of how actively a consumer seeks for these products or how it gets informed or anything that differentiates the uh, logic or the cognitive process. Yeah, that, there's that's no what I change. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. There's no change to the cognitive process, but in terms of valuing uh, products, mm -hmm. it's actually a micro segmentation one to one. Okay, understand. Thanks. Another one. Uh, yeah. Did you take into account irrationality in the decision taking? Because the, the consumers, they're making decisions, yeah. and typically you assume they're rational. The yeah. reality is sometimes they just may behave even you know, randomly or, I, or adversely. I, I love the, this concept of irrationality. For me, I, I still talk it that it's rational, but my rationality sometimes is different. So I take my rationality now Subjective. and I want the product now, I want to buy it. And that's, that's, a, that's, a, rational, yeah, yeah. that's a rational thinking. So I, I want to buy it because I want to buy it and there's A, B and C. But maybe two minutes after yeah. that, I said, no, I, I didn't want to buy it. And that's why we <laughs> consider them irrational. Uh, but anyway. Um, so that's a big uh, flaw in here. Uh, the conjoint analysis was validated by, an, by another company who actually didn't do the conjoint analysis, and that was taken as the, the, the like, 
core, right? It was square thing. We took yeah. that as, as a truth. So we didn't, we assumed okay. that based on those values, they were being rational. Uh, okay. What we tried to do, what we tried to do is when we, we validated, we validated the emergent behavior as well. Um, so maybe we, we, as we can assume, please believe me, that that irrationality compensates after time or something like that. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Sure. Well, do you have a question? Yeah. With uh, the risk of revealing I didn't understand anything. Sorry. It's, yeah, with the risk of revealing that I didn't understand anything of your presentation, the question is, it seems to me that, that, that the modeling part was the least part of the job you did. That rather, getting data, getting the conjoint analysis was, was a big part. Is that true? So getting the conjoint analysis was a big part. Um, the simulation was a, a tremendously big part as well. Um, but most projects, so at least from, from my small experience, um, simulation is just a part of the project, right? There's a lot to do with the data. Uh, but in this case, there were a lot of different rules, specific rules. And uh, later, I, can, I have the model here, if you wanna, if you wanna uh, I can show it to you. There is a bunch of coding. Uh, we were not uh, organized at that point, so it's kind of a mess. But there was a lot into the simulation. Um, uh, think, think of uh, things that we could never estimate the input. So we had the conjoint, which was pretty fine, was pretty cool. Um, but uh, think of the word of mouth parameters. Think of the advertisement parameters. Um, think of the of the um, um, the effect of income and sensibility to income. Uh, there were a lot of things that we had to come up um, and actually uh, build assumptions on, and we could only validate some portions of it and the emergent behavior. Okay, more questions. Okay, thank you for energetic presentation. Thank you.